We're Ariel. And Michelle. And we're, and the, we're board the board game, game tutors. tutors. Today, we're going to be doing just the basics for the Castle Panic expansion, The Wizard's Tower. Let's go ahead and start. All right. So in this part two video, the first thing we're going to talk about is just identifying the different kinds of areas that we have on the board because this is important for some of the cards that come with the expansion. So one of the terms that you need to know is the arc and that refers to a specific number like here we have number two it's like the whole piece of the pie that's within this numbered area so it, it'll be a certain color so this area is red but it's not the whole color it's like half of the red area so everything that's within that number two piece of the pie and it expands into the castle area as well mm -hmm. so that's called an arc another term you need to know is ring so that goes all the way around in a circle just like the name suggests so like here that's the knight ring it goes all the way around the red the green the blue everywhere that it says knight that's called the knight ring we also have a swordsman ring an archer ring a forest ring and I think the castle might be considered a ring too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the rings. And then we also have just colors. That's pretty obvious. So everywhere that's green, that's the green color. Right, so that would be three and four. Mm -hmm. Five yeah. and six are the blue. Including the spaces, as you can see here and yeah. here. Yeah, so that's also green. And it's basically like two pieces of the pie put together. So all the red is the red area. All the blue is the blue area. And then the last term is space. So that refers to a specific color and arc and ring all put together where they coincide. So where Ariel just pointed out, that's the red knight number two space. So the number two arc, the knight ring, and it's red, the red area. So all those things coincide in that one space. So obviously just keep that in mind when you're playing the Wizard's Tower expansion. Um, Sometimes there are space determine, uh, cards that specify spaces. Sometimes there are cards that specify color. Sometimes they specify rings all the way around and also um, arcs as well. Yeah, so it might say like two monsters in the same space. That means in the red knight part of the number two arc. Yeah. Yeah, usually it's not as specific as telling you red knight one or green swordsman three, but right. it usually means the same space. So if you're checking for space, that would be uh, green swordsman three. So that would be there. That's one example. All and right. So you can usually choose that yourself. Anyway, all right. So that's all the board clarifications that we wanted to go over. Uh, for the remainder of this video, uh, just to make sure you understand the topic really well, because it's a rather long-winded topic, uh, Basically, we're going to be discussing how fire works in the game. So, as I explained briefly before, um, you have dragons, you have chimeras. So you have creatures that breathe fire in the game. So, as you can see, there is fire coming out of this dragon's mouth. So, when he comes onto the board, um, as we learned in the Castle Panic Basics videos, um, the side with the highest number, so in this case, since it's not a triangle, it's a five-sided piece, the five would be the one uh, played on the board. So let's say he got placed in the two, uh, the two arc on the board. So now his five is placing, uh, placed in such a way that he's pointing toward the castle. Now, um, we're not going to go over the specific rules of how the dragon and the chimera breathe fire. Uh, it varies, so it's kind of complicated. We'll get to that when we describe all the mega boss monsters in depth. But... Um, so when he comes onto the board, um, if he breathes fire, which he will be doing consistently throughout all the time that he is on the board, uh, you would be throwing basically a fireball across the board. So uh, this essentially functions the same as a boulder would. So as you would say um, with a boulder, this fireball would come out of his mouth, go straight in the arc that he is currently in. It would only go in the arc that he is in and hit the first structure that um, he, uh, the fireball comes across. So um, uh, the difference here compared to a boulder would be, as you would know, um, boulders immediately destroy a structure. So um, that would be gone. But since this does not completely destroy a structure, it just sets it on fire with one flame token, then you would place that one flame token on that structure. So it doesn't matter if that structure is the wizard's tower, a regular tower, or a regular wall. Uh, 
that would be placed onto that structure. And as you can see here, there is one flame token on that wall. And now you can see um, there are two little slots here on every single structure that you have uh, as possible structure that can get burned down. So when this flame token comes to the structure, it can be placed one here in this slot, one here in this slot, and then there is no more slots for flame tokens after that. So as you can tell, if you have to put another one on here, that would go there. And if you have to ever have to place a third flame token on that same structure because a monster is breathing fire on it, the wall's not cooperating with me, but it looks kind of cool. Um, <laughs> anyway, if you ever have to put a third flame token on here, as I said, there is no slot for the third flame token. This structure is now destroyed if a third flame token is supposed to be placed on here. So same thing here. You see there, there's one slot there, one slot there, no spot for a third slot. And for the wizard tower, you can use your creative imagination. But as you can see here, you can put one flame token right here and one flame token right here. A third flame token would destroy the wizard's tower. So that is how fireballs work. And another question I know you might have would be, what happens if there are monsters in between the dragon or the chimera and they're breathing fire at your structures? Guess what? They're missed by the flame. <laughs> the flame completely passes over them and goes to the structure only. It does them no damage whatsoever. So those guys are pretty good at breathing fire. <laughs> so that was that. And now let's go over how... Um, so obviously, like I said, you don't want your structures on fire for very long because if the dragon is on the board, he will be breathing more fire. So you do not want that under any circumstance. So... As you can see here, I have a regular mortar and a regular brick card. Um, and as you uh, as you could guess, well, not as you could guess, but um, these serve another purpose here with flame tokens. So uh, as you know from the previous uh, videos, mortars and bricks, one mortar and one brick can build one wall. But now they serve the dual purpose of they can put out fire. So as you can see here, this wall has one flame token on it if I played one mortar or if I played one brick card. So let's say I only had one brick card in my hand. I could play this and remove this token. So at any time during your play cards phase, if you have one brick or one mortar, you can remove one flame token from any castle structure by discarding that card. So that is one way of removing flame tokens from structures. So imagine that there were two flame tokens on this wall mm -hmm. and we wanted to get rid of them. But if you either didn't have a brick or mortar card or you just had another purpose for the brick and mortar cards that were in your hand, right. another way that you could get rid of flame tokens is if you had a fortify card. So if you played a fortify card and put a fortify token like that on your wall, that would also serve as a way to eliminate flames, one or two flames. So it eliminates both if, if they're both there. Mm -hmm. And this specifically works for walls because walls can take fortify tokens. Towers can't, and you can easily see that because the fortify token doesn't fit on the tower, but it yeah, fits on the wall, as mm -hmm. you can see there. And so this immediately um, takes the damage from the two flames, and so this would be discarded along with the flames. Mm -hmm. So that is how uh, burning structures work in that particular way. Now, um, that's not all the fiery goodness that we have in store for you. Um, so let's say, for example, um, if you, uh, as the wizard in most instances, um, set a monster on fire uh, with an attack card that you use, we're going to explain those in the future, but if you set a monster on fire, you would take uh, a flame token and place it on the monster like so. Or if you are lazy you can just put it on top of their face um <laughs> but um yeah if you put it like so and you put it on here it doesn't balance very well so i like to do just this but um so if a monster is damaged and uh set on fire with a flame token then uh during over here on the order of place uh summary on step five after you move all the monsters uh, any monster that is caught on fire takes one damage for every flame token that it currently possesses on itself. So for example, this orc with two life, if he moves forward during step five, um, after moving forward, he would no longer have two health. 
he would be at one health because of the flame token that is currently burning him. And I like to just put that on their face just so it's simple and not so unbalanced when you move monsters around. Because as you can tell, um, structures aren't terribly solid and you don't want to be dropping stuff all over the place, forgetting where things go and whatnot. So that is how burning monsters move. So if he moved forward again uh, during the next player's step five, then he would move forward, and uh, since he only has one life left, he would lose his one life. He has nothing left. He would die at that point. So um, one tactic you can use against some of these big monsters that have five hit points is the possibility of setting them on fire and slowly whittling away at their life points, health points. Mm -hmm. So that's how burning monsters works. So um, what happens... Let's say, for example, now that we've discussed that, what if a structure is on fire and burning, and if the flame token will comply, there we go. Um, if a structure is on fire and a monster attacks it, what happens? This is what will happen. So um, this orc attacks this structure. He's here. Then during step five, he moves forward. He hits this structure. This structure is destroyed, but since it is weakened by the flame token on it, one or two, it doesn't matter how many it has on it, um, then this is destroyed and this orc is held back because it was a wall, but he does not progress forward and he does not get hurt because the structure was already weakened. Um, he is not damaged by hitting that uh, wall. However, as a consequence for hitting a flaming wall, he takes that flame token that that wall had. So if the wall had two flame tokens on it, he would have received two flame tokens. If it was only one, it would just be one. If multiple monsters attack that same structure at the same time, then you choose which uh, monster takes the flames from the wall. So it could be the dragon, it could be the orc, it's your choice. And because it's a wall, they stay out for one more turn. So, um, and same deal if the towers are on fire, um, if he if this has one, then one flame token would get transferred. If it had two, two flame tokens would get transferred. All right. So that is what happens when monsters attack burning structures. However, what happens? The last uh, scenario with fire because it's just so complicated. Um, what happens if a burning monster attacks a structure? So let's say uh, this orc was on fire. He is at two health and he attacks this structure. So like we said, during step five down here, um, you can see uh, uh, fire damage to monsters is assessed after monsters move in step five. So first, this orc would bump into this wall. The wall would be destroyed because it's not um, a flaming uh, wall then it would just be destroyed. And since it's not a flaming wall, he would take one damage because he moved forward and bumped into the wall. And that's the penalty of crashing into a castle structure. However, he also moved forward. And when he moved forward to hit the wall, then after he moved and bumped into the wall, he still has one health left, but he has one flame token left. So that also means he would lose his second life and be dead. The first damage taken from the wall that was not damaged the second damage point from being burned. So this monster would now be dead. So those were all the examples of how fire works. Um, sorry it was so complicated, but uh, those are all the different scenarios where fire would come into play. Obviously, uh, those different scenarios can overlap. Like you might have a burning structure at the same time as having a burning monster. So uh, Usually uh, there won't be tons of overlap, but um, those are a couple of the basic examples. So like um, just for um, uh, just uh, as an example, let's say the wall had one flame and the monster had one flame, then you would use uh, the rules in a way that makes sense with both of those sets of rules. So if this monster moved forward and he was at two, he would bump into the wall. He wouldn't take any damage from that wall because that wall is on fire, so he wouldn't take any damage, but he would receive a second flame token. And um, he received the second flame token. Uh, 
then he has two, so he bumped into the wall, he didn't take any damage, but he moved forward, so he would go down one for the first flame token. All right, so that is how the board, uh, different layout uh, circumstances of the board work, um, arcs, rings, etc., and that's how fire works in the game Castle Panic, uh, the Wizard's Tower expansion, obviously. And yeah, we appreciate any comments, feedback, concerns that you guys have. Uh, please let us know. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to our channel if you would like to have more content from us uh, at the Board Game Tutors at YouTube. All right, thanks so much for watching, right. and we'll see you in the next video. All right, bye everybody. Bye.